In this presentation, we will discuss our plan for entering deposits from the bank statement into QuickBooks, discuss how this will be different from a full cycle process that we would normally use to go through the customer cycle and how it will be similar to that process. Here is for more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Our bank statement from the customer. Over here are our deposits. So these are what we want to enter into the system. This is where we are focusing in. These are going to be deposits that were received and gone into the customer checking account. Note that when we consider the deposits, we usually have much less information as we do for the checks, meaning we oftentimes don't even know who made the deposits or who the deposits were from. If they are electronic transfers, we may have some more of that detail, which is nice. So if we're working in an electronic transfer system, when we get the bank statement, we might have some detail in terms of who made the deposit. But if we just went to the bank and made the deposit, then we may only have the date and the amount that was deposited. Generally, that will be okay because when we consider this type of system, our assumption will be that all deposits are going to be from customers. If this is the business checking account, then all deposits, we would assume, would in some way come from the customer. What we don't know really is when we earned the revenue under an accrual method, meaning did we earn the revenue before we did the work at the same time or after. Under an accrual method, that would be necessary in, in order for us to make sure the deposit goes into the correct time period. Here, we're not worrying about that. We're on more of a cash basis. We're just going to say, hey, it's a deposit. We assume it's for a customer. Therefore, the cash is going to go up, and so will the related revenue. So let's compare and contrast this uh, to what might be done in the normal process within QuickBooks. So I'm going to open up QuickBooks here. We got QuickBooks open to the home page. And the home page can be found in the company and home page. And then we have the open windows open, which you can do by going to the view tab and open windows list. And that'll help us to toggle around through the open windows over here. When we consider the deposits, we're typically considering what's coming from customers. That's what the assumption will be. There are some other deposits that could be made, however, note, and we'll have to, we'll discuss those as they come out, including a deposit from the owner or a deposit from the bank or something like that. But in those cases, we have to be tell our, our bookkeeper or tell the clients, or if it's our own files, that anything that is a deposit, we assume is from a customer unless they tell us otherwise or we'll flag transactions that look like they're not of that sort and ask about them. So the normal customer cycle would be here. We have the customer cycle. It gives us a nice little map of what normally happens. And what normally happens is we create an invoice. This is actually the point that we would typically record revenue because most systems, if we bill the client, for example, a service company like a bookkeeping company, we would do the work and then we'd bill the client and then we get paid later. <laughs> and so at this point in time, this is when we actually did the work and this is when revenue would be recorded. That's not what we're gonna do in our system. We're gonna record revenue later when we get the money. And in this system, if, if that would be the second point in time when we receive the payment. We would typically receive payment within QuickBooks. And then QuickBooks actually has another step where we would batch those payments together and then make the deposit. So this would be the full process where we would invoice the client, receive payment, make the deposit. Not all industries will follow that routine. For example, bookkeepers, lawyers will. But if we're talking about, say, a, a food company that does a restaurant or something like that, a food truck or something like that, then they would have revenue received at the same point in time they provide the work, which QuickBooks would usually record as a sales receipt, then group all the sales receipts and make the deposit. There's one other way that something could happen, and that could be that we actually get paid before we do the work, in which case we get, we get money, say it's like a concert or something, we're having a concert, so we get paid before we provide the concert, and then we provide the concert and we earn the revenue after we get paid. We get paid, in other words, before we earn the revenue. And that's common also with subscription-based services. So if we were to have an application and have an app and get paid before we provide the service, then uh, that would be another instance in which we get paid before. So the revenue should be handled under an accrual method when we get paid, that's what this full process system typically does. 
not only does it do that for us, but it also tracks things like accounts receivable, who owes us the money at a given point in time. Whereas under our system, cash basis, we have no accounts receivable. We're not tracking who owes us the money. All we're doing is putting the information in the system as easily as possible so that we can make financial statements from them, uh, basically a, a profit and loss. That would be the fundamental thing, a profit and loss in the minimum so that we can prepare possibly our taxes at the end of the time period and give us some idea of performance. So note, we're just scrapping this, this whole system and we're not going to deal with any of these accrual accounts if this is if we're running on a cash basis if we're just trying to enter the data from the bank into the register we're not dealing with any invoices and you might ask well what if we have to create an invoice we'll discuss some ways to to deal with that in the system as well but we don't want to deal with accounts receivable within the system if we're trying to make it as cash basis and as easy as possible we'll discuss some workarounds on how we we might be able to deal with situations where people owe us money <laughs> and things like that at a later time so what we're going to do then the easiest way to do this then is to enter this directly into the bank account so if we go to the lists up top and the chart of accounts we can see that we have these accounts were set up by uh, the quickbooks system and they didn't give us a checking account so what i'm going to do now is just add the checking account I'm going to go ahead and go down to the accounting at the bottom, select the drop up. Here's a drop up <laughs> and we're going to go new. So we're going to add a new and then we need to select the account type. It's going to be a cash type of account. So it's going to be a bank account. It's going to be specific. If it's a, if it's not a bank, if you choose current assets or something like that, it's going to cause a problem because we need it to be characterized as a bank so we can reconcile. We're going to say continue. And then we're going to add our account here and we may want to put checking account. This is uh, a, a generic. We may want the account number, of course, or the name of the institution, especially if we have, if we have more than one bank account. But most likely we have one. Uh, if we were doing a system like this, we would have one account that would be the business checking account. Again, we might want the institution, however, in that case still, and possibly the last four digits of the account number. We'll just go with a generic account here though and we're going to say save and close and so it's going to ask us about some banking information we're just going to close this for now quickbooks will have some pop-ups from time to time possibly asking us for it to give us checks or to set up online banking or something like that it's usually trying to sell us something but often things that are relevant so we're going to have that here now we're going to go in here to, now we can get into our register a couple different ways typically i go into the register by going to the banking drop down and then going to use register. But you can also be here, which we where we are at is lists and chart of accounts. And then just double click on the item we want, in this case, the bank, double clicking on it. And that gives us our register. This should look similar to if you have ever just actually handwritten a register, this is gonna be similar to that. This is what we're gonna do instead of entering the information into uh, the normal homepage type of process. We're just gonna go straight to the register and just enter this information here. As we do so, the QuickBooks system will still generate some reports as we do this, including check type reports mainly. And we'll discuss those, what will happen, how, how the system will generate basically financial statements and what type of forms it will actually make as we enter data into this system uh, to then create the financial statements. What, what tools does QuickBooks use to drive the creation because that'll help us to see if there's problems and make changes in the future if necessary. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.